Okay, this is Country Living E Oregon style 61, and today I am going to ch smoke some um, cheddar cheese. I have done um, several kinds, but today I'm just doing cheddar cheese. They were two pound blocks, cut them in half so that smoke will go in all the way around them. I smoke them for about an hour and a half, just smoke, just the cold smoke, and then we I take them back over to the house, let them cool down because they will get a little warm. I cool them down, um, let them sit for a little bit, and then we uh, wrap them saran wrap, tin foil, and then I vacuum seal them because I haven't ordered my uh, wax for my cheese yet. But that's how we do it to keep it for, for now. I'm also gonna do some other smoking today, but right now this is for the cheese. I gotta put my, um, my chips on. I smoke with apple wood and altar. Um, Anyway, that's, that's what's going on. As the time progresses, I will um, give you a, a close glimpse of what's going on. Okay, I'm just now starting to get smoke to come and clear through. I start timing when I see smoke, and I don't know whether you can see it or not. Let me get it up or not. I don't know whether you can see it. I've got a little bit of smoke coming out of the chimney. Uh, anyway, that's when I start timing. Once my smoke reaches the cheese, then I start timing it. And I know that by the time, by watching the smoke come out of the stack. It'll get really get to puffing here pretty soon. You won't be able to uh, probably see things because there'll be a lot of smoke in here. But, um, but that's when I start, um, start timing my time for an hour and a half. Okay, I'm back for a few minutes. Um, I put smoke to my, to whatever I'm smoking about every 15 minutes. Um, you want to keep the smoke going as much as you can so because that's what smokes your meats or your cheeses um, th like I say this is a cold smoke there is no heat that's the reason why I have the um, cheese down at the far end so there's no way that it can get any kind of heat because eventually even though you're you're uh, putting just cold smoke to it you got to have a fire to get the smoke to it. So uh, it uh, can get hot at this other end. I don't know whether you can see the smoke coming out of there or not. Just barely coming out of there, good. Let's swing it around here. Maybe you can sit, let me move my chair. I'm over in the shop. Um, this is where we keep the smoker. So if you can, there's the little box that we have. The, the fire in. Let me see if I can. Let's see if I can get down lower. Okay, there we go. Sorry about all the moving around. Anyway, that's what I. I just put some new chips in. Um, I don't know if that'll stay up. I guess it will. And that and I like say I I mix the two, and then there's a chamber that the smoke goes up into, into the barbecue smoker whatever whatever you want to call it. And it goes through there into whatever you're smoking. And you have control. I've got, also got a temperature gauge deal on it. Um, you can control it on how much smoke you put into things by, let me go around to the back side, by adjusting the lid on the chimney. Now maybe you can see, I don't know whether you can see the smoke any better that way or not. But that's kind of what's going on. Let's, um, I'll check and see, see if we can, um, something fell down on it there. But anyway, the cheese is being smoked. You can see the smoke coming. That came off the top shelf. It's just ashes is all it is, but. Still don't want it on there. Get it off before it gets too soft to where it it uh, stays on there. Okay. But anyway, as things go along here, it's already starting to get a little bit soft. It'll start sweating next, and after the sweating, I, that's the reason why I do it for an hour and a half because. Um, then it starts to melt a little bit. And just as it's starting to melt a little bit, 
is when I pull it out of there, and that's about an hour and a half. Um, I've done Corbalone, I've done Monterey Jack, I've done Mozzarella, I've done Colby Jack, and Cheddar so far. Um, you can buy it at the store, or you can buy the more expensive, like the Corbalone and that type of stuff. Um, it's just whatever you want. But when I do, I buy a two pound block, two pounds of it, and then I have them cut it or whatever. And then the ones that, that is no biggie, I bring home and cut myself into one pound blocks so that I can get the smoke around it. Like say with the four pieces, that's a total of four pounds. So uh, I'll bring you back. I don't know, like say, I don't know whether you can see the smoke or not, but um, it's just barely coming out. I need to probably stir things around again. Okay, I'll be back in a little bit. As you can see, I've got my little helper with me. He lays in the chair and waits for me to smoke things. Uh, yeah, shop's kind of messy. Got things stacked up. That's because of the winter time. I also have another little buddy. And his name is Buddy. The dog's name is uh, Booker. There he is, see? And then um, I've got a cat that comes over and helps me. His name's Buddy, and he's a real pain. He tries to take the dog's chair away from him, and uh, he's a lover, and he's not. He's not a fighter, he's just a lover. He just wants to be petted and loved on, and him and the dog get along really well. They share the chair together. And when I was over here in the, in the winter time smoking things, they had a blanket and they were curled up in the blanket together. So anyway, I just thought I'd let you see my helper. He comes over and helps me. Okay, I have got about 15 more minutes on this and then I will pull that and it's already starting to discolor with the smoke. So I'll put the lid back down and we'll give it a little bit more time. Uh, that's about it. And then I will go on to do some other smoking. But right now it's just the cheese. Okay, I'm back. Uh, you can see, I think you can see that I got smoke going everywhere. Um, this has been smoking for an hour and a half. And I'm going to take it off of here. And it's soft. So I'm going to lay it in the pan. And it's dripping. And there we go. I'll take it over to the house here in a little bit and I will uh, um, start wrapping it as soon as it cools down. So anyway, uh, that's how I smoke my cheese. You have a good day. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Okay, I'm back on wrapping the cheese. It's cooled down so I'm going to wrap it with my saran wrap first. Right off to the side. Um, and then I wrap it in tin foil. I mark the tin foil so when we vacuum seal it, you can see what it what kind it is, you know, through the vacuum seal bag. Still a little bit soft, but it's cooled down. do this to protect it. I mean, if you were going to eat it right away, uh, then you could uh, just put it in a Ziploc bag. But we store it in, the ref in another refrigerator over at the Quonset Hut, so when we want it, we've got it. And this is how I do it until I get my uh, my cheese wax, which I'll uh, will be ordering. So then I can, vac I can uh, wax it. foil. Then I mark it and like I say then I vacuum seal it.
probably don't have to do this much wrapping on it, but I do. That way I um, know for sure that it's not going to um, get dried out. You can, like I say, you can do it with any kind of cheese that you want, or the kind of cheese that you like. I've done a little bit of everything. Today I was just doing the, the cheddar cheese, but like I say, I have done the provolone, I've done the Colby Jack, I've done the Monterey Jack, I've done um, the mozzarella, and, and of course the provolone, but but uh, you can do whatever kinds you want. You don't have to do all the kinds, different kinds that I do. <clears throat> I just needed to do more cheddar cheese. I was down to a pound left. And so I needed to do some more. And then I'll write on these. And then I'll show you that we... Um, back and seal them and then I take them over and put them in the refrigerator. I've got an extra refrigerator over at the Quonset Hut um, so that I can put extra things in it, stuff I don't have room for in this refrigerator in the house. There you go. And when I get ready to vacuum seal, I'll show you what it looks like. But outside of that, that is the end of that cheese. Catch you in a, on the next video. Okay, uh, we're going to vacuum seal uh, four, four pounds of cheese. Uh, that's the same smoked cheese that I did earlier today. Um, and I got it wrapped in the saran wrap in the tin foil. Now we're going to vacuum seal it. And that's the only way I can store it right now until I get some wax so I can wax the cheese. We're only going to show you one in no sense and trying, it's all the same, but what I wrote on the top of them, um, I wrote on the top of them to say that it says smoked cheese and the date on it. I got smoked cheddar on him and he's putting them in there and I'm going to vacuum seal that up. That takes care of all the air. That way it won't go stale on us. And then I just stick it in the fridge over there at the Quonset Hut. And it... And there you go. See how much flatter that's, that tin foil is? It really sucks the air out of there. Okay, you guys have a good day. Thank you for watching, and I'll catch you on the next video.